All right, in this module, we're gonna talk about calculating and the effects of a polymer's molecular weight. So molecular weight uh, for a polymer can vary because the repeating unit and how many of those repeat units are in a chain can vary as well. So the molecular weight is kind of uh, varied for this unlike other uh, molecules. And so the molecular weight M uh, is going to basically uh, be the mass of the molecule. Uh, and that's, again, de dependent on the length of the chain. So this small chain, their short chain, will have a low molecular weight. And this much longer chain will have a higher molecular weight. And as you might expect, um, not all chains in a polymer will have the same length. And so we typically think about a distribution of molecular weights in a given polymer sample. So again, uh, not all polymers will grow to the same length or number of repeat units, and so we have this distribution. And so now we need to kind of look at that distribution, and there's two ways in which we can look at that distribution. We can either look at the average molecular weight based on a number fraction. So how many chains are in each um, kind of bin of molecular weights? And so you kind of see here that from 5 to 10, uh, uh, 10 to the minus 3 uh, grams per mole, uh, we have a certain fraction based on number. The other way to average and look at the distribution is to look at the weight fraction. So how many, um, what weight uh, of the total polymer is in this particular weight fraction and this particular bin. And so those are kind of the two main ways uh, we can look at, uh, at those two. So a number or a weight averaged molecular weight. And so here's basically how we calculate those two. And we start with the um, molecular weight average, uh, or the number average molecular weight. And so if we just kind of look at this uh, first term, this is our number averaged molecular weight. So M means a molecular weight. The um, subscript N is referring to number averaged. And then the bar over top uh, means average. So that's kind of what these various pieces mean. And so if we switch that for W here, that's referring to our weight averaged molecular weight. Okay, so for the number averaged, we're gonna take the total weight of the polymer divided by the total number of molecules that we have. And we typically do this by bins. Um, and so in doing so, uh, this gives us two options for averaging, as, as we've discussed, um, and the number averaged by its definition uh, is going to be a smaller number than the weight averaged molecular weight. And so you kind of see that on this plot here. Um, some other things to kind of to, to, to note here. So um, we have the number averaged and the weight averaged molecular weight, um, and these are calculated by a summation, so the sigma you see here, uh, of xi multiplied by mi. And so what this means is uh, the mi, again, refers to the molecular weight, but the molecular weight of a given size range i, so that's where the i comes from, and then the xi refers to the number fraction of, those of the change in that size range. So this is kind of the bin if you were uh, used, um, used to histograms and so forth. Uh, and so we sum up each of these size ranges to encapsulate all or the total number of the polymers. And so the only difference with the weight averaged is that we swap out the number fraction in each size range for the weight fraction in each size range. And so those have to sum up um, xi's for the whole range have to sum up to one, WIs for the whole range have to sum up to one. All right, so those are kind of the, the ways in which we're gonna calculate these two um, molecular weight averaged. And so I wanted to kind of work through an example with you so that maybe you had a, a better idea of what this meant on 
a uh, practical level. And so instead of talking about polymers, we're going to think about something that we can um, kind of more visualize or a smaller number as well. And so instead of molecular weights, we're going to look at just weights. Um, and so this is actually um, of students, so we would never actually do this, but um, this is a sample size of 10. We have 10 students and we're looking at the distribution of their, their weights in pounds in this case. Um, and so we have them sorted from lowest to highest. Um, and we want to look at these same calculations with this in mind. So the first thing that we're going to do um, to solve this problem is come up with bins or size ranges. So here we have 81 to 120, uh, 121 to 160, and uh, et cetera, up to uh, 400. So these weight ranges, um, and oftentimes in the book, for these questions, these uh, size ranges or molecular weight ranges are already done for you. Uh, and same thing if you ever do a histogram in some software, they tend to make these for you unless you want to set that yourself. Um, so don't worry too much about setting the size of these ranges for yourself. But the next thing you're going to, after these ranges are established, um, the two things that we're going to look at are how many students, so that's the number. So in this mass range, we have two students. So again, you're just kind of basically looking at these two students essentially up to 120. Um, and then we're also taking the mean weight. So in this case, the mean weight would basically be looking at these two and taking the average, right? So uh, basically taking the average of 104 plus 116, and that's where we're getting this 110. And we're doing that for all of them. So the mean weight, or WI, is the mean weight within that range given. And so that's repeated for each range as we go through. And at the end, we can sum up the number of students. This should be equal to 10. And then we can sum up the weights, and this should be equal to um, the total weight of the students. So basically, if you just sum up these values. And so that's given here. Um, so to calculate then for xi, we need to look at the number of students in a given range and then over the total. And that's what the total number is down here. So basically for this first range, we're going to take 2 uh, for this range and divide by 10, which is the sum. And 2 divided by 10 for the next one, 3 divided by 10, 2 divided by 10, 0 divided by 10, and then 1 divided by 10. And that's the weight frac or sorry, the number fractions for each one of those ranges given here. And then for the weight fraction, we're going to multiply the number uh, in that range, so 2 multiplied by the weight. So basically that is the total mass in that range, and then divided by the total mass. So that's um, 1881. And so we do that for each of the one of them. So for the first one, that's 0.16, or sorry, 0.117. And again, all of these for all the ranges should add up to one. All of these for each uh, range should add up to one. So that's a good check to make sure you're doing these calculations correctly. And so once we do all of that, we get the number fractions from the previous uh, calculation and the weight fractions from each. Um, we can sum up xi times mi for each one of these. Um, and just to kind of, um, for our calculation, we called wi here m, what's mi in our calculation. So just, just keep that in mind. Uh, it's a little bit different for this. But we sum up those, as you can kind of see here in the calculation. And we see that the number averaged weight, or molecular weight if we're doing for a polymer, is 188 pounds. For the number average and if we do the same calculation but with the weight fractions we see that we get 118 and again the weight fraction is higher as we said um, and so those are our two uh, the ways we calculate those two so in the next example or sorry in the next module we're going to go through an example uh, related to polymers of the same type of calculation